Egypt's government stated in 2015 that it would create a new capital city, 45 kilometers outside Cairo, the existing capital. The government feels that Cairo has become overcrowded and that relocating the capital will provide more space for residents and government employees, which is going to benefit everybody. However, this is not a novel excuse. Egypt's authorities have been creating new communities in the desert for decades, but unfortunately, none of them have found a solution to Cairo's density problem, and based on the current building state, their new capital wouldn't be a solution either. So what is Egypt's motivation for establishing a new capital? Well, we're going to find out, so I suggest you stay tuned. Billboards offering a better way of life have long adorned the congested streets of central Cairo. On a busy and filthy central street like Cairo's, one simply invites passers-by to just breathe. The project of constructing an alternative capital aims to wipe away Cairo's troubles and establish a gleaming new future. Foreign embassies would be invited to transfer, and companies would be drawn to a central business zone of 20 Chinese-built buildings. If the government's intentions are successful, the relocation will create a network of unoccupied buildings. The alternate capital will be 700 square kilometers in size, which is almost the size of Singapore, and it will house 5 million people. The design displays a sweep of high-rises and residential houses, as well as a government district centered on a green river, a mix of open water and manicured vegetation twice the size of New York Central Park. In Egypt, this massive new administrative capital is being developed 45 kilometers east of Cairo, an attractive desert as, unfortunately, current capital is hardly functional. The embassies and agencies surrounding Cairo's landmark, Tahrir Square, are choking the city's arteries, whose streets are closed to safeguard the safety of those structures and their people, making it very difficult to go from point A to point B. Furthermore, the capital's already packed 22 million population is set to treble by 2050. I do believe that is meant to say triple, but we're moving on. So it's simple to conclude that the new administrative capital, which would eventually house embassies, government entities, and legislature, 30 ministries, and 6.5 million individuals, it's, it's a must have, it just is. Furthermore, the government has pledged to provide each inhabitant with 15 square meters of greenery in the new construction. As a result, the project is marketed as an effort to combat emissions and make Egypt better. However, suppose you dig under the surface, and more importantly, examine the money. In that event, you'll know that this plan is far more than the government's humanitarian effort to decongest Egypt and improve living conditions in the metropolis. The new administrative capital is anticipated to cost approximately $40 billion. The military's massive participation in supporting the project exemplifies the merger of the civil and army in a country headed by a retired army general. Current president came to power following a coup that deposed Egypt's first legitimately appointed president, Mohamed Morsi. Furthermore, the military is not simply funding the initiative. It will also benefit financially greatly from this big endeavor. The ACUD, a majority owned by the army, is in charge of marketing residential apartments in the new capital. Furthermore, the cooperation is in charge of selling and managing the properties in Cairo that will be abandoned after agencies and departments and embassies relocate. Which means that the military is going to reap enormous financial benefits once the new capital is constructed. Furthermore, because the administration has no jurisdiction over the military's budget, these profits will not be scrutinized by a civilian body. Additionally, there are concerns that the project would help the nation's backbone sectors and struggling firms recover and enable the military to extend its tentacles further into the Egyptian economy. It's also unclear who's going to be able to reside in the new capital when it's finished. The residential units are sold at exorbitant prices. A two-bedroom home in the new capital costs around $50,000. That's a hefty sum for people in a nation where the GDP for each capita is around $3,000. As a result, the new administrative capital will function as another gated enclave for the wealthy, while doing little to address the housing requirements of Cairo's poor and disadvantaged people. Moreover, many people regard the new administrative capital as a massive resource waste. According to critics, the money spent on developing the new capital could have been used to facilitate living circumstances in the impoverished areas. Gosh. In response to these complaints, the government stated that the city would ultimately contain social housing. Still, it did not specify when these apartments will be ready and available to, well, those that need them. Which concludes today's video. Please comment down below to let us know what you think is going to happen next with Egypt and building a new capital. 
Like and share this video for more Egypt news, and don't miss subscribing to the channel. Or do, I can't really force you. <laughs> Anyways, later.